My name is Johanna. I am searching for an apprentice. Interested? First match of the day is starting to get exhilarating here as the playing Ducks take on Trick Esports and we are tied one to one. Yeah we are. And well we already saw Stitches asking for some playtime. I wouldn't mind having a few hooks in the game. Maybe later on. Ding Toss is playing later, you know, JPL bringing out those hooks. But for now, the playing ducks are hoping to continue their trend of winning here as we are gearing up for our third battleground of the best of five series. Let's find out where exactly we are going. It looks like it will be Dragon Shire. I like it. I love Dragon Shire. Dragon Shire is a fantastic map to watch in competitive Heroes of the Storm. All the coordination that you need on this map, the shot calling plays such a huge role here. Do you go for the Shrines? Do you go for the Dragonite? Do you just stall out, try to win the lane here? And there's a lot that we can observe on this one. And yeah. drafting is, of course, influenced by it also a lot since Globus have such a huge priority here. This battleground is probably the most tug of war like of all of our battlegrounds. Fighting over those two shrines are so important for unlocking that dragon. And the moment you finally do it, you break in and you get over the uh, opponent and you finally outplay them, you get awarded with a huge dragon that can push in. Another thing that we could see again is also Leoric. It's a hero that mm. is great for the solo lanes. Normally when you're playing on Dragonshire, you're trying to have a solo lane up at the top. You have the either a rotation with a four-man between mid and bottom, or you have a dry lane at the bot lane. And oftentimes all to the top, you see a great solo laner like Leoric, and it's a hero that especially Trick has played quite a bit. And the last time they played on this map, they also chose Leoric to just run that solo lane. It could be something that they are now doing too. And yep. one way or another, going to be fun to watch the draft now. It's all about the top lane, too, for this battleground. You talk about the Leoric, suddenly Sonya, yeah. Dahaka, Ragnaros, less seen here in Europe, but he still has his own place here on this battleground yeah. in particular. Okay, so right now, uh, Globals. That's, of course, another thing that we have to watch out for. Playing Ducks banned Arthurs every single time, and mm. now they are fi faced with a bit of a different decision. Do they ban out a global? Do they ban out the Arthurs? What are they going to do? We have mostly two global heroes that come into play here and they actually ban the Haka. Okay, so that leaves the false set open and also Arthurs. What does Trick Esports prioritize? 100% Arthurs, man. Like, they love that hero. Every single time in the past, they have picked up Arthas if the opportunity has presented yeah. itself. It's just someone that works so well for Alex Approji. You get your flanks set up. Also, you can only means, oh my gosh, it's not 100%. They're going for Falstad. It's the bird. So playing Ducks, they should get it, right? Yeah, so Trick chose uh, playing Ducks the bird here on one. And now we could see that Arthas. I, I mean, if the Ducks don't take Arthas now, they know already that Trick is going to take yeah. him in the second rotation. So they have to have a strat set up for it, yeah. no matter what. Um, wow, very interesting to potentially Take the false set over the Arthas to see if that pans out here. Playing Ducks, do they have someone that can run Arthas? You have Nande, obviously. Yeah, he's he can uh, run it pretty well in the top lane. Chris Plosion can run that yeah. too. Uh, normally, we see him on this map more leaning towards Johanna. Mm -hmm. That is more his go-to hero for this map in particular. But if they go for an Arthas, they could combat with an Anubarak. We could see the Malfuria and Howling Blast into Roots. Yeah. The one hero, actually, that I'm a bit surprised that we haven't seen today is Greymane. Greymane has not played a role for these two teams. Yeah, playing Ducks has dabbled in them a few times in the last couple of weeks. They seem to enjoy the Tychus and their Vala a little bit more. There but we there go. There he is. He has blue like pulled it. in. And now is the time for the playing Ducks to make the choice. They go from Malfurion. and Arthas has been left alone here. Tricky Sport on the opposing side will now get their choice here. I do like the Mount pickup. Uh, first off, because if you are playing against Arthas and you get him down to a quarter health, he's usually going to pop that army in the dead, start healing up. If you get a clutch timing with the Twilight Dream, you can go in for the punish. You know, I'm really interested in that Dehaka ban, because if you... What happens if they ban Arthas? 
you have both of the globals available, mm. so Trick can make a decision if they want to go into Fawcett or the Haka, and the other one is left for the playing ducks. So with the ducks banning out the Haka, they left only one real global in the game, and Trick Esports says, okay, we pick that, we get enough value out of it. So it more or less signals that on this battleground, the playing ducks are more afraid of a Dehaka than of anything else. Because now they have the global on the other side, plus Arthur's on top of that too. So that's a really interesting ban to see that. Dehaka gains a lot of value on that top lane, but that they're really so afraid of Dehaka here that they are willing to just simply ban him out and allow Trick Esports on top of that to get an Arthur plus a false stat. That is pretty significant. It doesn't make sense, though. Think about it. If you're ever in a situation where maybe you're in a 4-on-4 four four in the bottom and Dehaka's in the top lane and he rotates in, there are the two bushes on the left side and the right side of the temple that if he gets in and he does hit yeah. that drag, that's a guaranteed kill every single time or at least a burnt cleanse simply because he hit Z and Q. He has definitely amazing utility here, but giving... Trick Esports, Force that plus Arthurs, whereas on every single map so far, Playing Ducks looked at the map and they said like, you know what, the first thing we're going to do here, we ban out Arthurs because we are not going to give that to Alex. And they said even in the interview before, if Alex has an on day, we might be in trouble here. So now they give Alex one of his best tools. So that is pretty cool to see that they are just putting so much priority on that ban on the Haka over that. But we have, we have even more for Trick, they have Gul'dan too. Yeah. <laughs> Trick Esports is in a really good spot right now. You have one of the best globals for this battleground. You have Arthas, which is one of their best warriors in terms of flanks and getting set up. And one that's pure comfort pick for their shot color, or one of their shot colors, Alex Aproji. And then you have Gul'dan, who is great for going between middle and bottom lane. If they put themselves in the spot where Falstead's top lane, Arthas gets a Howling Blast, Gul'dan brings out a couple Qs. That's a dead member every yep. single time. Trick has such a good foundation. Now, playing Ducks has been out Ariel. The mix-up with Gul'dan here is just too powerful, and you can keep that Arthas topped off constantly with those heals. So, we have a few things that we still need to talk about. A Nuburak is possible for Trick. So they can play Arthas and Nuburak. Mm -hmm. There is still a Auric around. Both great top guys. Okay, a Nuburak is taken. Abathar taken with that, so the double Grey main play is available at this point for the Ducks. Trick, what are they going to do now? Are we going to see that Leoric play? The problem, of course, is that normally when we're talking about a Leoric, it is Alex who plays the Leoric. He would probably also like to play the Arthurs, but when we're talking about tanks, we have seen Rema switch more into that main tank role for Trick. It's something that enables Alex to make more plays. He has been talking about that in the past, that he feels it frees him up to initiate more plays. So they could switch that role around a bit, but they still need one way or another a top laner. Arthurs can fill that role, but traditionally you don't necessarily want him there. What do you think about double support? When we're talking about the supporter with Love Lucio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, that is an interesting approach. So with Johanna all of a sudden, it frees up Arthurs to be the top laner. Because Falstead would like to be in the rotation. You can have Falstead on the solo lane. Personally, I would prefer... I, I, I guess it matters a bit to the extent how you want to use him, but normally when you have Falstead in the foreman, yeah. you can fly top to just put pressure out of the solo lane of your opponent, make it a two versus one. So that is one of the setups. And as, oh god, I am liking that last pick. There's oh, a This gin. is an awesome game, I love it. This is Europe right there. Playing Ducks really mixing up their drafts today, bringing out the Abathur, now the Chen here for that top lane. We've seen Chen once before here in HCC Europe, and it was played by Hydra from Synergy. They didn't win that battleground. I believe it was on Brax's holdout. But nonetheless, now we have a Chen for the Ducks. Yeah, and not only a Chen, we have a Chen Abathur. Yeah. So that is wrecking backlines. And also Chen is fantastic on the solo lane. Chen is a fantastic solo lane hero. The one thing, of course, that is very annoying for him is if he's up against a lot of stuns. How many stuns do we have on the other side? None. Well, only yeah. ults. The only thing that they can use for stun is heroic abilities. That's the only thing that can really drop him out of his, of his shield. Well, you have Kadem. Um, you also have the Lucio boop. So there are a couple of things here to stop okay. it. But it's nothing that's like aggressive and holds him down for a while. Exactly. You can interrupt, but you can, can't lock him down. In yeah. a sense. So we have a stun with Johanna, we have the Horrify that can disable him, but you're not going to see a solo lane up at the top that can really do that. Johanna, I wonder actually if it triggers them enough that they are saying we are going to set Johanna on a solo lane, which you normally don't really want to do, but if you're afraid that Chen gets too much value out of the trade and you want to have to condemn against that, maybe? I don't really think so. Normally you would expect Arthas to be up at the top lane now, but let's see how they're going to play this. There's very little that they can do to keep that Chen in check outside of big team fights where they are willing to drop a Horrify and also, of course, the, uh, the Blessed Shield itself. Well, we'll have to see how they handle it. Let's go ahead and go into game number three. We are tied one to one. How will Trick Esports handle playing Ducks and their Chen? 
Beautiful draft for our third game here. Cool heroes to watch for us once again. And of course, it's all about the Chen. The Panda to the left for team playing Dark Nanda playing him. Sport being on Abitha this time. Chris on Greymane, Wolfjaw on Malfurion, and we're seeing Chris Blosion on Anubarak. To the right, Trick Desport in the red. Nappe will be playing the Lucio. We're gonna have Arthas played by Alex the Proji. Falstad will be played by Eternal. We're also gonna have Crosby playing the Gul'dan, and Rimmer will be on Johanna. I also like the pickup on Johanna, just simply because I feel it is as I said before, the Ducks usually run Johanna on this battleground, and that seemed to be something that was a bit targeted. So the thought process was definitely there, where they just said, okay, listen, guys, we have the Arthurs already. We can now also pick the Johanna, and then we are in a spot where we pick heroes away from them. We put them into a bit of an awkward position here, and at the same time, we have a strong wave clearer for the four-man, but we can set Arthurs up to the top, and that's what they're currently doing. So Arthurs is indeed at that top lane, and we have that four-man rotation down to the bottom with Johanna using that wave clear to push the Ducks back. Let's see how this unfolds for the team. Trudy Sport in terms of their four-man rotation should be able to clear out quickly over their opponents. Now, Chris on that Greymane should aid enough in terms of clear, but that's gonna hold this 2-2-1 rotation set up here. As we have one on the top, Nande will just do his best to control that lane. And already you're seeing the fruit of his loom. You see the towers here, low on ammo. Top lane is going to be really interesting. As I said before, there is a lack of a really hard CC against Chen for the solo lane. And uh, Johanna, I could have actually seen them even trying to... Nah, Johanna is not really the hero you want to have going one-on-one -on -one against the Chen, but it's really the only thing they have right now which would make sense for them to kick him out of the trade. And you can already tell how Colonel is even attempting to help out here. But with having the Abatha on top of all of this, Nande is just going to have a really good time up here. Gonna watch Nande as he continues on this top lane. And gosh, watching Chin just makes me so thirsty, man. I just want to drink out of some water or something. As he continues to keep holding that lane against the Arthas here. Four to four is our next goal here, as we are currently sitting at level three. The bottom shrine is under control for Sport, and that will be the entire theme of the game here until we move to the mid game, merely for the fact that they are really trying to pull throughout those lanes. I'm really curious to see how these team fights are gonna, uh, are gonna, how they are going to unfold. Because the problem that you have with the chain is, are you gonna use your interrupts? Or you, you can't simply ignore it. With an Abitha, that is not gonna happen. He's going to jump on false and on Gul'dan, and you have a really rough time. But the one hero that you really want to lock down and take apart is the Greymane. Yeah. So when Greymane jumps in, he's usually the target where we see that happening because you want to get that kill. So I really feel that playing ducks, if they play this correctly have a very disruptive team fight potential and they should have the ability at least to put a lot of pressure on Falset and and Gul'dan and get those kills. So it's a scary lineup that they're running here even though it's not really the norm that we usually see. Yeah, it really is. Chin is happy when he's getting CC because again, as you mentioned, the Greymate can get in and be aggressive. So we'll see how that pans out. As for now, this is probably one of the best things that the Blaine Ducks can do in their freedom here between the middle and the bottom lane is grabbing a Giants, but Trinity Sports answered back right away with their own. We do have the Dragon unlocked here for the playing Ducks as they can control the North and South Shrines. No one can really move in though. With Rimmer floating around, he'll have that flashlight and he'll be able to interrupt there with that iron skin. Top lane, we have Chen now fighting versus Arthas in a second, but Alex has to always move back. That's the problem of having Abathur in the opponent set up because Abathur can just simply jump on Nande and help him out with these fights. And Alex has a really rough time to pressure Chen again because he cannot interrupt the trade. He's having a really hard time there. Do want to know his level one talent that he did grab though, Internal Hunger. Able to use that quest and finish it off. Chen is a good hero to grab quest talents against because he's going to be sitting still for a couple of seconds and it always sets you up. Zagara in particular it has a talent at level four that can spike her damage. And if you have the chance, pick that against Chen. Be aggressive and really get those working in there. So Eternal Hunger just now finishing up, which increases the mana it restores by four and the maximum 40. And it also increases its damage by four. And it's a nice talent for additional lane sustain, but that fight at the top lane is just continuing. And Chen is getting help here. Once again, we have Abatha, and Alex is assisted by Eternal. That is the false that flight we've been talking about in draft, and that could be the problem that Nande has. He's trying to escape here, attempts to go maybe no even way. for a kill, but whoa, Eternal no way. sees it coming. He is still going to fall, though. That's the death of Falstead. Chris Blosion moving over, and even with the Eternal, the perfect reaction here, it, the panda still survives.
Chen bellows out a big laugh after that as he's going to be able to get a kill there with the false of the aid of Abathur and of course the back coming in. Chris Explosion moves in for a dragon, but Rimmer should be able to slow this down until we have false at spawning in for the fly-in, but still, big plays from the playing ducks. The playing, I, I really like that draft. I really think that draft is absolutely awesome. Any other pickup than the Chen would have probably we would have probably ended with them losing out on this very hard, but Chen can not only hold his own in the top lane, he can pull the shit back easily. It's really that synergy with Chen and also the Abatha and them opening up space in teamfights later on for Greymane as well. That is really the big part here. Chen as a solo laner against no stun comps is amazing. I need to phrase this a little bit different because they have interrupts, but they have none on the solo lane. Yeah. So there is nothing that can really drop him out of that trade and really pressure him. Arthas is not going to win out on that if the Abathur jumps in every now and then. And even the attempts to turn it into two of us, one with a false set. First of all, it's not scary anymore for Chen. And second of all, it doesn't really matter. You can't win that lane in the long run. Basically, when it's all said and done, he just buys so much time for his team to get to level 10 because he can't do anything against him in the top lane. He's just complete bully mode right now, just going full hardcore on Tricky Sport. Gonna have a hammering coming in from the left. And with that being said, Kind of a big shout out to Nande. He's played so many different heroes with the playing ducks. It's been flexible for them in that top lane role. We've even seen him play Samuro in a matchup. So Nande continuing his practice here and really bringing out these oddball heroes. Just imagine what's going to happen here once that we have the level 13 talent for, for, for Abatha and the extra sustain for Chen. Mm -hmm. That guy is never going to die. And you also don't have a cleanse. So if he goes barrel, which he could, you can just kick them into. Uh, and there it is. So he goes for the keg and there's no cleanse, so he will get the target. You just jump in and then you keg a Gul'dan, for example, straight into your team and that should be an easy pick right there. Keg seems fun, but it can be hard to pull off, especially against the Lucio. One wrong movement with the Wandering Keg and you don't get to pull them into your team. So Nande will have to play on point here with that engage, but it is still a clever one. He's going to be aiming for that Gul'dan in particular. Also, a Cocoon being used, so Lucio might not even be a factor depending on True. who they target with that. This is a really smart setup. From a draft perspective and a strategy perspective, this is a really interesting move that they made with this. Chris Plosion needs to be cautious. Yeah, nice, perfect timing, dodging the Condemn. And guess who's having fun at the top lane? It's the little panda still taking down waves and pushing this fort more and have more heavily. I mean, Kaldor, little, little panda. Yeah, okay, he's a big fat panda. He's a big panda. He's a, he's a big one. He's fluffy! And he's pushing in the he's top not, lane. He's, <laughs> not, he's not fluffy. <laughs> he's so fluffy. He's, he's fat. He's a guy that I would uh, definitely hug and, you know, enjoy it, man. <laughs> a little beard there, a little bit of fluffiness. Uh, the little panda is reserved for Lila, your other girl. We should see her more often in the future. Okay. <laughs> Little Lily. <laughs> Double support, it could happen. But first of all, what happens is a horrify. Cocoon is still on the ground. Guess who's in trouble? It's Crosby. Down he goes. That's the kill. Double gray main value once again with Lucio Cocoon. No escape for them. That's a kill against Gul'dan and up to the top lane. Still Chen versus Arthur, but the Ducks. They are doing so well here. I'm loving this draft. Yeah, we've been talking about the playing ducks a lot here. Let's talk about Trick Esport. If they get past level 10 here, they're getting some control overall. Alex Aproji in the top is trying to deal with Nanda. He will pop Army of the Dead here to sustain through. And with the fort hitting Shin, he will take damage, but he just rolls away. <laughs> It's so annoying to play against a good Chen, especially if he has an Abathur to back him up as well. It's one of the worst feelings in the world, but Nande is doing this really well. The problem for Trick really is I feel they need either a good Gust or a good Horrify to make a play happen. They need isolation. If they want to get a kill, they need to isolate someone and then uh, burst the target away. Ideally, of course, wait. I mean, if they can maybe, maybe isolate someone like Greyman, get a quick kill against him. That would be fantastic, but it's really tricky. When a cocoon down, comes down, they need to shut that off as fast as they can to turn it back into a five versus five. And they actually like they are back in the game with a lot of experience, so they're not falling too far behind. Their wave clear is helping them with that, especially since Ramabola picked, of course, Johanna. Yeah, and the only way for them to really get that big engage with my guts that you're talking about is if Chris misplays, if he overextends. And so far, Chris has been pretty on point there, especially with Malfurion there to back him up with Roots. Yeah. The one thing that I have to call out with Nande is the one thing I don't like about what we're seeing with Chen right now is that his, his skin game is definitely not on point. We all know that <laughs> War Master Chen is the best and the only skin for the hero. So I'm a little bit disappointed on that. But besides the skin, 
It's awesome. Well, what about this uh, level 13 here? Withering Flames. Setting a hero on fire reduces their spell power by 25%. Looking to really just take out Gul'dan in every single fight. It's the main damage dealer that they have with the Gul'dan. It's definitely an adjustment to the opponent's draft. Normally, you wouldn't really see that here. Pressure Point is oftentimes the talent of choice that we see in this case, just because it helps you to stay on a target way more and lock it down for everyone to kill. But if you are simply attempting to take damage away from your opponent, what they're doing here with the Withering Flames is, of course, a pretty fantastic move as well. But this is really a targeted build. The standard talent would still be Pressure Point. And the good news, too, is every time he uses that, it synergizes with the level 4 talent where he gets a damage aura. So really, just being near that Gul'dan and burning him down will be a big tool here for the playing ducks to use. And Lucio, without the amp it up, can't actually outheal that damage coming from Chen. So a difficult situation for Tricky Sports to deal with. Cocoon has been popped, Chris Explosion on the right side, but with Rimmer showing up, all five members for Tricky Esports are going in for a 5v4 engage. Sport Billy is completely in the back with a copy on Abathur, losing that very early here. Not able to do a lot with it, and playing ducks need to move back. There's an attempt to go for a gust as Eternal flies in deep. Horrify is being used. Isolation on Wolf Joe. He is down. They might try and turn it against Chris, but are not able to secure their kill. Tricked with a very nice fight here. Capitalizing on the mistakes that playing ducks made with this in the engagement. Yeah, that really hurts there. Wolf Cho, not really, you can't vulture him too much there for using the ice block. Not wanting to get money gust into the opposing team, but with the blessed shield follow-up because of that ice block, he gets picked off due to the tricky sport going in for the aggressive play. So good job by then. Chen does get the fort in the top right. Tricky Esport though will take the opportunity to take out the keep wall, and now they have a keep exposed. Yeah, the ducks right now, I feel like that, that their draft enables a lot of things for them, and it puts them into a really good spot. They have constant pressure at the top, but that flank that they were attempting where they are going for the fight, that did not work out at all. The coordination just wasn't there. They need to be a little bit more on point with what they're attempting to do here. The Cocoon was forcing the battle, but then they never could really get into the backline with the exception of the Abathur copy, and that didn't really net them very much. And then on the way back, that Horrify and the Blessed Shield that you pointed out really destroyed them. The Darks are still ahead in experience, just slightly, but I, what I really like about Trick is how they they play a very concentrated game. Like They really pay attention to what they are trying to do here. They always push the lanes. They're making sure that they are taking down the fort at the bot lane. They take camps here. So it's a really well thought out approach against a very difficult comp to play against with what they are using. I'm going to see playing ducks get their chance in the fight soon here, though. That's the one thing that's been missing out. Tricky Sport, you talk about the rotations, they've been playing very concentrated, but we haven't actually had a full fight breakout for the playing Ducks. Yeah. Need to see that aggressive play from Chen at some point. He finally rotates down here in the bottom left, especially the Mercenary is pushing in. Nade is on the left side here. We'll be healing up with the aid of Wolf Joe, but with Tricky Sport having five members in the bottom left, Abathur can go for rotation, but he has to watch out for Falls Dead. You make the, per the, the best point here. This is exactly what they need to do. We need to see that five-man fight where Chen goes into the back line, tries to lock down Crosby, gets help from Abathur, now that we have the 16 talent for the extra slows. So there's a lot of arguments to be made for the Ducks, but they need to have that engagement where they're just like making sure that they go into the fight. Now they have the copy on Abathur. They need to make a play now. They're already looking for it. Cocoon is not used yet. Sport Billy is going to lose the copy soon. And the opportunity has passed. They're not going to take this one. This is where Chen is good, though, at locking down targets and keeping them around the area. Playing Ducks doesn't go in for it, but the Mercenary Camp in the top right corner is what they were buying time for. Already they have damage on the keep in the top right corner. Cocoon does pop out at the moment False Dead flies away. They're focusing down Arthas. Once again, the Horrify. They go in for Malfurion. They're trying to save him with a good kick. Well done here, but Malfurion still falling. And we have Lucio dying on the other side. So four versus four with Crosby eliminated. And this is the time for Chen to shine. Goes in, tries to go deep. Abathur needs self out. Alex about to fall. That's another kill. Falls Dead back with a gust. But once again, Chen jumping in deep. And Nanda with a kill together. With Chris on his gray main. You have to wonder if Rimmer maybe got a little bit too greedy there going for the tap there on the fountain. He could have maybe just gone on the top right corner out that false and Mighty Gus came in to keep him alive. So with that kill, Johanna is taken out. And this Merc Camp with the aid of Abathur Symbio Hats is taking a keep down. 19 to 17, the playing Ducks are playing an aggressive macro game. Now we're talking. This is what we have been mentioning throughout the entire game so far already. The Abathur combo with Raymay with Chen, how much damage it can do, how the, uh, the Cocoon on, uh, on the Nubarak is able to lock down targets and force the team fight out of Trick. And they really pulled the trigger here once that they saw False and fly to the top. 
the one thing to really keep in mind here is, of course, with Abathur, you would love to have the double grade. But with the setup that they have, especially that Chen jumping into the back line, the Symbiote is gaining so much value. It is crazy what a good Greyman or a good Chen with an Abathur hat can do in that back line, especially, of course, with that 13 talent that you pointed out a bit earlier, where you just shut down the damage that Kul'dan can push on you. And it gets even more terrifying. Level 20 coming nearby, and Abathur gets his favorite storm talent, Hive Mind. He'll be able to sit on top of that Grey Mane and that Chen if they dive a target and help out with that damage. So 20 about to hit here for the playing Ducks. Look for them to be a bit aggressive on their plays here, trying to take down this fort and maybe getting into a fight. Here goes Nanda. He dies in. Nanda, the panda. Panda is going for the throat here, starting to go in. Chris with another punt attempt, but here comes the stun as Anubarak emerges. Nice bless shield, great play from Trick, sinking their ults up and trying to go for the kill. The Panda is down, and they are attempting to lock the rest of the team out too, but they are not able to pull that off, unfortunately for them. So it is one kill. Chris Explosion will save his life here with Cocoon as Falstead flies in. But that was a 20-18 fight in Trick Esport with their coordination overcomes the talent uh, disadvantage they were at. And now Trick gets aggressive on the bottom left. They grab these giants and they should start posturing around grabbing a keep. I really love how Trick is approaching this. They know that they're best tools to make something happen here are not only the Blessed Shield, but the Horrify. So they try to sync the two of them to get kills. If they can get the kill, as they were just able to do with Chen, they have an opportunity. If that, of course, does n is not successful in eliminating a target, they have a massive problem, on the other hand. Right now, they are able to take down a keep. Oh, but Alex! Oh! He gets picked off there, pulls a, a BG. Just unfortunately dies to a keep here on the bottom left, and Lex. Alex the Proji unfortunately taken out. Definitely lag. <laughs> lag it. <laughs> EU version over here. All right, well, Tricky Sport now forced to retreat as they lose their main tank here with that Arthas. Uh, Johanna still available for them on the bottom right, but with a 5v4 potentially happening here with an Abba their hat and Chin diving in, they don't want to deal with any of that. Yeah, you need. Oh, and there's the cocoon. They are willing to dive the fort easily. They go for the fort. Rammer's down there. Horrify already being used. Nice. Bolt into the Twilight Dream and a double kill. Taking down Lucio and Gul'dan. Great play here by Knapp. Uh, sorry, by, by um, playing Ducks. Ducks. And they should go for an engage here. Uh, yeah, they're going to go for it. They're going to start moving into the core. Colonel, the Thornal taking damage. <laughs> we'll be able to get out of there for a second. Rimmer on the left side here using the iron skin. Here we go. We're diving the core. Chen leading the charge. Greymane needs to be locked down. He's one of the main damage dealers here for the playing Ducks. They are attempting to do so, but with the cleanse coming out, Wolf Joe tapping off Gus. on heels. Chris is just focusing it. Now, yes, you are correct. The Gust coming out. They knock him into a keep. Nande jumps back in. Just no. Doesn't matter. They go for it. They should be able to finish this off. They're going in again. Nande's on it. So is Chris with the Abathur. And this is the playing Ducks taking down Trick on Dragonshire. Victory in game number three. Wow, just think about what you just said there, Kaldor. Playing Ducks is ahead 2-1 to one over Trick Esport. Do you think that we would have been saying that today? I think it would be a very close series. Yeah. I thought and still think that Trick has a very good chance here, but the Ducks are only one map away, so they can make a, they can make a stand at this point. And they've been talking about how important this is for them. But I really feel that, especially in game number two and game number three, it comes down heavily to the drafts that we've seen. Yeah. And this draft in particular was just perfect. It was a really nice last pick that we saw that completely surprised Trick and that won them the solo lane easily. So the top lane was always in their hands, with the Abathur in particular. You could see Falsa trying to fly up, turning it into a two versus one. Chen just shrugging and saying like, you know what, I don't even care. <laughs> and Nubura comes in because he has all the time in the world to make a transition from bot lane to top. And then says, hey boys, how you doing? Falsa is down. And all of a sudden, that's a Dragonite right there for the Ducks. And the team fights went exactly as we said. We have two heroes jumping into the back line, and you don't know who to deal with. Do I try to kill the Chen? Do I try to kill the Grey Mane? It was brutal. What I love about it is that the playing Ducks took one of their players that we don't normally call a playmaker, and they allowed him to make the plays. He controlled that top lane. Seeing Nande at a spot there where he could be so successful for the playing Ducks was such a treat to watch. But they still have to finish the series.